guys welcome back again to the channel today we are going to make a very simple top a cow neck top as you can see on the thumbnail so if you're interested please continue watching and make sure you watch to the end so you won't miss out of any important information so guys without being said let's get started Before we continue, please give this video a thumbs up so that it will reach other people. Okay, thank you so much. And it has been a while. I hope you guys are doing well. May God bless you as you support me in this channel. For the top, I have one and a half yards of crepe material. You can use chiffon material. You can even use a flowered material. Anyone is fine. Without wasting much time, I'm going to place my fabric on fold. So guys, I've placed my fabric on fold using my hip measurement because that's the biggest part of my body measurement. If your biggest part is the bust measurement, then use it to place your fabric on fold. So guys, I have my hip measurement divided by 4 plus extra two inches allowance on fold and yeah i'm going to start by marking out my starting point so i'm going to cut the back side and then we'll use it to cut the front side so i've marked out my starting point one inch and this is my shoulder line and on the shoulder line, I'll place my shoulder measurement of 8 inches. That's 16 divided by 2, 8 inches. Then I mark. So the neck width I'll be making use of is 3 inches. 3 inches neck width. I have my neck width here, 3 inches, and my shoulder measurement of 8 inches. On that point, I'll slope the shoulder by 1, 1 inch. This is because our shoulders are not straight. Then I'll connect to the neck width. From here, I'll take my armhole depth. Normally, my armhole depth is 8 inches. To get your armhole depth, you measure your round armhole and divide whatever you have by 2. Or your bust circumference divided by 6. Whatever you have, you add 1.5 inches to get your armhole depth. So... I normally use 8 inches for my armhole depth, that is 16 divided by 2. But in this case, because it's a sleeveless top, I'm going to make use of 7.5 inches instead of 8. So my armhole depth is going to be 7.5 inches. Because I don't want it very open. But if you are going to attach a sleeve, then make use of your normal armhole depth. So, I'll draw a straight line to that point. So guys, on the armhole depth, I'm going to add my boss circumference. My boss circumference is 39 inches. But I'm going to be making it 40 inches because I want it a little bit free. So 40 divided by 4 will give us 10. So I'm going to connect like so. And I'll draw my armhole curve like this. So this is for the back armhole curve. And then again, I'm going to add one inch for sewing allowance. And I'll extend the curve to that point like this. So after that, I'm going to measure from shoulder to the waist from shoulder to my waist is 18 inches then i mark so this is my waistline this is my waistline and on that point i'm going to add my waist circumference measurement which is 36 i'll be making it 37 divided by 4 will be 9 points 9.25 then I mark 
I'll add one inch for sewing allowance as well. So I haven't gotten the waist measurement. I'm going to take my vertical measurement again from shoulder to the length of the top, which is also my hip length, 25 inches. And I'm going to add one inch for hemming allowance, making it 26 inches. So from shoulder to 26 inches will be the length of the top. So guys, this is my hip line and also the length of the top. So there I'll be adding my hip circumference measurement. My hip measurement is 43. I'll make it 44. Divide by 4 will give us 11 inches. I'll mark and add 1 inch for sewing allowance. So I'm going to connect my points. So the next step is to come here and curve this point because I don't want it straight. I'll come up by one inch and I'll connect with a very slight curve. This is optional though, if you want to leave your own straight up. So for the back side, the neck depth is going to be one inch. One inch, then I mark. So I'll make a curve. This is the back neckline. The next thing I'm going to do is to add half inch on the shoulder line to join the front and back together. So we have half inch for sewing allowance here. Then I'll connect. So after that, the next step is to cut it out. At this point, if you have not given this video a thumbs up, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. the front side I would like to remove the sewing allowance this um, shoulder sewing allowance I'll fold it inward and pin so can you see what I have here I've removed the half inch for joining the two shoulders that's the front and back shoulders together what I need is just the shoulder measurement, no allowance. So I can use it to cut the front side. I'm going to fold my material for the front side. So guys, to cut the front side, I've placed my fabric on fold again. And then the first thing I'm going to do is to measure from here. I'm going to measure 12 inches and mark. 12 inches this is not constant if you want you can add it you can make it 13 inches 14 inches or even less than 12 inches depending on the number of pleats you want at the neckline I hope you understand so for me I'll mark 12 inches here so guys after marking this line 12 inches. I'll bring the back side and starting from this line, I'm going to place the back side. So after placing the back side like this, the next thing I'm going to do is to draw the shape, the shape of the back side. Do you understand? So I'm going to chalk out the shape I have here. I mark the I mark the shape of the back side from here and I entered by one inch which is the sewing allowance I added to the back side I hope you are following and I stop there okay so this is it for here for now so we are going to work 
on the neck part so guys coming to this part please pay attention here coming to this part from here to here is what i'm going to use for the pleats at the neck line so i measure 12 inches which you can alter if you want to increase or reduce it depending on the number of pleats you want at the neckline at this point i'm going to add my shoulder measurement divided by two my shoulder is 16 divided by 2 is 8 plus extra 4 inches making it 12 inches as well you can decide to reduce it or increase it it depends on how low you want the cow effect to be so i'm going to measure 12 inches and mark and at this point i'll measure the same 12 inches as well and mark and I'll connect the two points. So what I have here is from here to here, 12. And from here to here, 12. Do you understand? Like I said, it's not fixed. You can decide to change it depending on what you want. You can increase here depending on how low you want the cow effect to fall. And then you can increase from here to here. Depending on how pleat, number of pleats you want at the neck line. Do you understand? So having done that, I'm going to come here. This is my shoulder slope from the back side. Can you see? On this shoulder slope, I'm going to trace the line to meet the 12 inches here. For us to be able to get my armhole curl for the front side you know the back armhole and the front armhole is supposed to be equal so can you see what i just did so i haven't done that the next step is to draw my front armhole on this part i hope you can see it so for me to draw my armhole for the front side here is what i'm going to do Remember, I've already, I've already marked my one inch sewing allowance here from the back side. Can you see? I chalk the one inch sewing allowance here and I stopped there. So on that point where I mark the sewing allowance, I'm going to place my hand there. I'm going to place my hand there to hold the fabric and I will rotate the armhole gradually to this point this is my 12 inches can you see so i'm going to rotate it don't be in a haste while you're doing this just for us to get the arm front arm hole So the reason why I need to hold it here is so that it will not shift. You need to get the armhole for the front side and back side to be equal. So can you see what I just did? So I'm going to trace what I have. I'll trace what I have. So after tracing, this is what I have. So I'm going to return it back to the position. So we now have the armhole for the front. And because it's the front armhole, I will measure half inch from that line. And... Redraw the armhole for the front side. It's supposed to be deeper than the back armhole. So guys, here I have my front armhole curve and this is my back armhole curve. Do you understand? If you have any question please leave it in the comment section i will, att I will attend to it
And if you are not giving this video a thumbs up, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And try it out. Try it out. Let me know your results in the comment section. The next step is for us to cut. guys this is what we have this is the front side and then this is the back side so guys I'll go over to the machine and I'll use this bias to turn the neckline then turn the armhole the two armhole okay I'll do the same thing to this front armhole I'll use bias to turn it and for this side if you want, you can make use of bias or you cut a facing for it. But for me, I'm going to fold it a little and stitch. I'll fold it a little and stitch. No bias. So I'll go over to the machine and do that and I'll be right back. So guys, after turning the armhole and then the neckline and this part this is what i have as you can see this is the back side and then this is the front side so we are going to work on the front side to achieve the pleat at the neckline so guys remember i said this side is for the pleat so we are going to be doing the pleat now so i'm going to fold it like this i'll fold it like this and fold again like this and then the last one like this so i have three pleats so this is what i have feel free to do as you want if you want to gather this part anything you want is up to you so i'm going to measure this side to make sure it's aligned to the shoulder so this is the back shoulder can you see the two of them is equal so i'm going to iron this down it's optional though if you don't want to iron it it's okay Secure it with a pin. The next thing I'm going to do is to join the two shoulders. This is the back side. I'll turn to the wrong side. And this is the shoulder. I'm going to join it together. I'll sew with half an inch on this side. So let me just pin it so you understand everything. So guys, after pinning this side, I'll grab the next shoulder, this other side, and I'm going to pin it to this side. So this is the, the second shoulder. I'll place it like this and pin. So 
so so guys after pinning this is what i have i will now go over to the machine to sew the shoulder with half inch sewing allowance and i'll be right back so guys i'm done joining the two shoulders as you can see and this is what i have so the next thing i'm going to do is to join the two sides i'll be sewing with one inch allowance which we added so i'm going to go over to the machine and i'll sew the two sides with one inch sewing allowance and i'll be right back after joining the two sides this is what i have the top is ready so i'm going to turn to the right side so guys this is the right side and as you can see this is the cow effect and the pleat looking so nice if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and try it out try it out let me know your result in the comment section you can wear this top alone you can wear it alone or you wear it with jacket just like you see on the thumbnail so whichever way you choose to wear it is fine go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and share so that others can benefit from this tutorial so guys thank you so much for watching Till next time, I'll see you again. For now, it is bye-bye.